Morning folks, everybody hear me? If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Morning folks, Indy Truck Davy in the truck. Another bad hair day. Morning Susie. Um, coming to you today from Aberdeen. Lowered one. Where it's misty, overcast, Still quite warm at 13 degrees, but hey, uh, as I say, it's a misty, murky morning. I'm parked outside the cemetery, just a long way, um, uh, Aberdeen Football Club. Uh, good morning, folks. Right, review of the week, but we'll start as we normally do with the coronavirus update. Morning, Ted. Morning, Malk. Right, anyway, here we go. Now... The coronavirus tracker I use has finally got its heat wrapped through the changes that have been made by the Scottish Government and how they compile the fig uh, figures. So we're now back at a format we'd used to. Okay, so tested in Scotland, um, 220,198. And that's plus 3,455 from, the, uh, from the 17th to the 18th. These are the figures for the 18th of the 6th, 2020. We'll get an update today for the First Minister as usual at half past 12. Right, tested positive in Scotland over the peace since the, pande since the pandemic hit. 18,077 and that's plus 11 from Wednesday to Thursday. Okay. Active cases. Um, they've actually managed to get this sorted out now. Active cases, 1,127, and that's minus 81 for Wednesday to Thursday. And confirmed dead. Bloody hate that. Confirmed dead, 2,464, and that's plus 2 for Wednesday to Thursday. Confirmed and suspected deaths in the community and hospitals. The total is now 4,000 and 86 and my condolences go to absolutely everyone who has lost a loved one um see this vile disease right review of the week moving on monday the 15th all right a tenth of uk millionaires pay less tax than the average earner a study carried out by the london school of economics and warwick university um and they took a uh, Pile of tax returns, anonymised tax returns for millionaires from HMRC, and they analysed it. Ah, hi Lee, good morning. And they analysed these tax returns, and it turned out that a, a tenth of the, the millionaires were paying less tax than the average earner, on between fifteen and thirty thousand pounds a year. And how they were doing it was they were a uh, taking their remuneration in the forms of capital gains and in corporate dividends. So they were basically legally using loopholes in the tax law to actually pay less on their million pound a year salary than somebody like me on the average wage was paying in tax. Bloody outrageous. Morning, Kevin. Absolutely outrageous. Right. Bojo has his call, his conference call with the EU. Testing still ta far too low, Ian. Thing about testing is, you can only test people if they show up to be tested, mate. If they're not showing up to be tested, you can't drag them in off the street. And the other thing about the testing being so low is, if the tests are so low, that means there isn't that many people coming down with a virus. For example, there was only 11 new posit positive cases from Wednesday to Thursday. So that's excellent. So this carry on with testing being too low, it's not too low. It's only just because there's nobody getting sick with us, which is a bloody good thing. Right, anyway, moving on. Bojo has his call with the EU and says he'll get a, de a deal done. He says he'll have a deal done by the 31st of July. Right. The EU does not fancy his chances and have reiterated that the UK government can cherry pick. And that they must get they must get back to the agreement they made in the political agreement when they changed um, the the when they changed the deal for Bojo. 
and the new political agreement was put in place. So uh, they have to sort out fisheries, the Irish border, and the UK is going to accept the European Court of Justice as the final arbitrator for any disputes that comes up and any trade deal done. But as we know, the UK won't accept the European Court of Justice being the final arbitrator, so it's looking mere and mere like no deal, and it's looking like Bojo's talking crap as usual. All right. Also on Monday, Bojo goes shopping in an empty. Beijing can test 40,000 a day. Of course they can. But they can order people to show up for tests, Harry. You can't order people in a liberated society to show up for something they don't want. Um, eh, anyway, Bojo goes shopping in an empty shopping mall to try and convince people it's safe to go shopping. Ah, he's obviously learnt his lesson for shaking horns with COVID-19 patients. He doesn't actually want to get in amongst people who are actually shopping. He just wants to show that he that he's feels safe going out to go shopping in an empty shopping mall. Huh? Meanwhile, in Scotland, it's revealed that the SNP MP Amy Callaghan is in hospital having suffered a brain hemorrhage. It's supported she's doing well. Right. Mm. Education on Monday. They start in on the Scottish Government on education. The cuckoo's in the nest. The three English parties sitting in the Scottish Parliament have a right go at the Scottish Gov over the idea that there might have to be blended learning at the end of a, when the new school a term starts. That continues through the week. Okay. Right, let's move on to Tuesday. Tuesday the, the 16th, right? UK campaign group, the Good Law campaign, um, launches legal bid to have a judicial review into how a small pest control company was a one a one hundred and eight billion pound contract to supply PPE to public health in England. It would appear there was no tender in process, nothing. This small company was just gifted this contract for a hundred and eight million. There's only sixteen employees in the company, and its parent company, believe it or not, is actually um, an IT company, a data mining company. There's a pattern starting to emerge here, right? Okay, Tuesday. After the EU had made its statement about the UK not being allowed to cherry pick, Johnson threatens EU with no deal unless it gives Bojo what he wants. What Bojo wants is to cherry pick a deal by the 31st of July. The head of the World Trade Organization warned Boris Johnson that no deal would, uh, would slow the UK recovery from COVID-19 and that a close deal with the EU would be the best and save jobs. Roberto Az, Azev, Azred, Az, Azaredo, head of the World Trading Organization, said um, getting a close deal, as close a deal as possible to the EU, would serve the UK best and it would serve the car industry best, um, which is likely to be hit extremely hard with a no deal situation. Okay. Um, hi, Pete. Hi, Alan. Right. Also on Tuesday, David Lammy, MP, Shadow Justice Secretary, says Bojo's uh, commission into equality in the UK in light of the Black Lives Matter movement in the UK was written on the back of a fag packet and is just a text box exercise as the Tories haven't implemented the findings of previous uh, commission reports into... Um, anti-racism and inequality in the UK, right? Also on Tuesday, travel and tourist industry outraged as UK government fails to join EU scheme to get tourism up and running again. The scheme which provides an app and a website uh, to um, inform travellers of localised hot uh, COVID-19 hotspots um, in member states and that lets travellers avoid hotspots. The UK wouldn't join as at present a... <laughs> the UK is one big bloody hotspot. <laughs> so the UK don't join. The tra leisure and tra uh, travel industry here in, here in uh, the UK go after nut because they realise 
that it would open up uh, their, the travel uh, agents and things like that, and people would be able to make informed choices about where they're going based on this app, which would give you localised hotspots in all member states of the European Union. It would open up the European Union to travel to people again, but the UK refused to join. All right. Also, Tuesday, Jackson Carlo car crash claims FM made a serious mistakes in a dealing with the coronavirus epidemic in Scotland. His claims was based on a joint study by St Andrew, uh, by Glasgow, Edinburgh, St Andrews universities, which stated that Scotland could have uh, less deaths if it had grounded planes, closed ports, and shut the Scottish border. Car crash being as thick as mints, forget it forgets to mention that. Borders are reserved, and the Scottish Government couldn't land planes, shut airports, close ports to everything except for essential food and medicines. And But what he didn't realise, what car crash didn't realise he was doing was, he was making the case for a borders and immigration to be devolved to the Scottish Parliament. Because borders don't just include the physical land and sea borders and the, uh, and the airspace above your head. It would also mean taking control of immigration. So, car crash actually makes a case for a, uh, unwittingly makes a case for devolving borders and immigration. But that's car crash for you. Half a brain and he would be dangerous. Saying that, he's only got a quarter of a brain and he's already dangerous. Right. Uh, Bojo U-turns on free school meals for kids. This is also Tuesday. Uh, down south, after footballer. Um, Marcus Rashford, uh, Rash Rashford um, galvanised public support. On the same day, Bojo also knew that the Scottish and the Welsh FMs were going to announce that their schemes to feed kids um, uh, during summer holidays would be continued this year as they have been in other years. OK. But the Guardian reports that Nicola Sturgeon is following Bojo's lead. What a lot of crap. Huh? As I said the other day, the SNP press office should be standing on their necks and saying, Hoy, we've had this scheme running up here for years. We're not following anything that Bojo is doing. Uh, Tuesday, Bojo strolls into the Commons and scraps Difford, the Department for International Development, and he amalgamates it with the Foreign Office. The announcement to his own cabinet by surprise, as Bojo had as health secretary, Mike Cancock, he revealed on Sky Television. Bojo hadn't even discussed it with his own cabinet. He just marched into the Commons and against the advice of all the world NGOs, just amalgamated day two um, departments and probably have robbed uh, the world of the UK's um, develop aid development fund because there's no way that the Tories are going to be honing the money, or the Foreign Office is going to be honing the money out to um, needy causes, uh, causes and NGOs. Uh, so, that's just the way it goes. The world will suffer, because Bojo and his Tories don't like international aid. What's this? Oh, I didn't phone you, Sarah. I'm sorry, love. Uh, I'll phone you once I've finished the broadcast. At least you can see I'm live. Or oh, is that a growly face you're making at me, wee dragon? Ha, 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 ha. see you later. Love you, baby. Right, anyway, on to Wednesday. Well, I'm not getting any tea tonight because I forgot to phone the wife. Right? Wednesday the 17th. It's supported that the Chancellor is preparing to scrap the triple lock on pensions. Now, the UK state pension is already the lowest in the developed world and the Chancellor's about to scrap a uh, triple oak. Now, rumour has it he's going to boost the pensions by about 18% and that way they don't need to bother with it for the rest of the Parliament. There is no chance that they're going to up the state pension by 18%. That's just pure comedy. Unless, of course, they're going to steal the money for what used to be the Department for International Aid. <laughs> Right, there's a COVID-19 breakthrough. It's announced that a cheap and widely available drug can help with uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID in severe patients. Uh, 
Dex a matho e Dex a methadone is a stimulant which reduces inflation in the lungs. Um, it's used for asthma sufferers and for rheumatoid ar- uh, arthritis, I believe. But anyway, it's cheap, it's cheerful, and it works apparently. I uh, give my dinner to the dog, Susie. Thanks for your support, people. Ah. Meanwhile in Scotland, BBC Scotland uh, caught misleading the public again as attacks on the Scottish Government on education continues. Alison Payne was presented as a simple mother with concerns uh, and a member of a PTA, Parent Teacher Association, with concerns about the restart in the schools. But Alison Payne, who was portrayed just as an ordinary mother by the BBC, is a Tory party member, ex to Dame Annabel Goldie. Alison Payne started her career with the Scottish Tories as a, a researcher at the Tory Research Unit. She later became the advisor to uh, and aide to Baroness Goldie. Um, the BBC, in the interest of impartiality, should have informed the, uh, the public that this person wasn't just a, a, an average member of the public. This person was actually up to her neck in the Tory party. And at the moment, she's also a member of the Tory um, think tank, Reform Scotland. All right. Miss Payne was given a platform to attack John Swinney to say that there'd be no guidance for the Scottish Government um, on reopening schools for councils and that uh, um, that parents were outraged. But actually, according to Cosler, they've got plenty of guidance for the Scottish Government and parents are very supportive of the Scottish Government's uh, approach to opening schools. Parents want their children to be safe and they want their communities to be safe. Because let's face it, as I said yesterday, when a child goes back to school and things go, uh, if the children go back to school at 100% the way the Tories want them to go back, and hopefully they can if we can keep this virus suppressed, but children might, uh, you know, this disease affects children less than anybody else. But remember, these children are going back into the communities, and a lot of these children have grandparents pick them up at school gates. So, although the children might not feel the effects of COVID-19, there are a few studies that say they don't transmit it as uh, um, as readily as adults, but they do transmit it. So it just takes kids an outbreak in one school and grandpa to go and pick up one of the uh, go pick up the kids and then catch the virus and bang ten days later, grandpa's dead. Or grandma's deed. So this is going to be done properly, folks. Can he? It's all contingency plans must be put in place. But the Tories and this house in pain are hounding the uh, the Scottish government to get kids back to school right away. Sort of like Bojo's day and doing the road, but the Tories just do what they're tell up here. They follow whatever Bojo tells them to do. Right. Also on Wednesday, Pierre Murphy of the consultancy firm UK Water says Scotland is the answer to England's water problem. Mr Murphy pointed out Loch Ness holds more water than England and Wales combined. Mr Murphy wants private enterprise and UK taxpayers to invest to pump water from Scotland's 31,000 odd freshwater water locks down to England so that the water companies down there have got plenty of water to sell to English consumers. Right, because in England they pay for their water through a manometer. Right. He also pointed out that uh, if it wasn't for Wales, Birmingham, the city of Birmingham would run dry of water in one day. Because as I said on my Wednesday report, they actually flooded a huge fertile Welsh valley and turned it into a a huge super uh, reservoir to pump water into England. Now they want to take the water from Scotland. The water in the future is going to be a valuable resource and they're not getting to steal that the way they stole the, the, the oil as a resource. But what this guy Murphy said, well, hey, it's the UK's, it's yours anyway, let's just go and take Scotland's water. Forgetting the fact that actually the water was a gift to the people of Scotland from King James as a joke as he buggered off down to London for Edinburgh when he took the crown of England. On a Thursday the 18th. Alright. That's all I want to cover for Wednesday. 
FM Move Scotland on phase two of a slowly and carefully moving Scotland out of lockdown. The NHS will start to reopen services closed at the beginning of the lockdown, like elective surgeries, and dental services, cancer care, all that sort of stuff. People who are shielding will also be allowed to go out for exercise once a day, and they'll be allowed to meet up with family members, but they have to stay two metres apart and date in the open, right? Um, households are allowed to extend and all, to have an extended household. That could be another family. And they, they get to visit each other indoors, and they, they will be able to overnight with each other without social distancing. All right, so Nookie's back on the cards for all these single people out there as well, because they'll be able to go and visit another single person, right? Uh, some retail outlets will be allowed to open. Dental surgeries will start again. Um, warehouses, labs and factories can get up and running within the guidelines for social distancing and uh, so on and so forth and hygiene, right? Um, unfortunately, for the pub and uh, the pub industry and nightclubs and things like that, uh, they won't get to open outdoors. Um, they will hoping to be able to open beer gardens and things like that, it ain't going to be allowed, all right? Um, there will be, she also announced a couple of reviews into things like social distancing and getting pubs uh, and beer gardens opened. And uh, she also announced that they're having a look at, um, they're uh, having a look at whether to make face masks mandatory in shops and close spaces and he cannot, he, and public transport. All right, so they're going to look at that, and we'll get an announcement on that next week. She's waiting on advice for your health advisors on that. All right. You can see a spike coming in the Scottish population. Every chance here, Frank, but we'll just need to hope that people will behave themselves. All right. What else are we going to Thursday? After the statement... First Minister took questions from party leaders and others in the chamber. Car crash, Jackson Carlow, failed businessman, failed dodgy second-hand car salesman and alleged car thief, um, told the FM she wasn't moving fast enough and opening up the economy. The First Minister wasn't taking any of his crap, actually. She took the gloves off, pointed out the hypocrisy in all the statements he's made in the chamber since this began, and tell them basically, oh, just shut up, nobody's listening to you, yeah, an idiot. And she, what she actually said to him was, just do what you want, car crash, I'm just going to ignore you. Right. Leonard went on the three tests he set for the AFM in week, uh, four weeks earlier. The First Minister gently took, um, took a, gently took Leonard, Tricky Dicky through the fact that she'd already met all these three tests that he'd so called put down, uh, or he so called laid out for moving into phase two of releasing lockdown. Now, I watched this yesterday, and when the First Minister was talking to uh, Richard Leonard, I really felt like she was talking to a wee boy. I was rolling about laughing. She was very gently. Um, <laughs> art thief, no car thief, Lenny. He, <laughs> she was very gently leading the stupid bugger because he's a wee bit tapped, he's not quite all there uh, politically. So she was very gently walking him through his three things and said, I've already covered them and I've went further, right? So he wanted to test and, test and trace and isolate, he called it. He didn't want to use the Scottish, uh, uh, Scottish government's term of test and protect. Right, so she pointed out the test and protect was already working, right? Um, a, she pointed out that a hygiene and social distancing was working fine and all. And the third one was a on. What was the third one on again? Oh, aye, a route map, a route map a, to getting the economy going again. Um, a commission. To put a route map uh, in place for the, to get the economy up and running and to get a the a, 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 for a new a new f a, um what was a correct term? Sorry, folks, I'm getting a wee bit excited. This the term uh, was um, 
Oh aye, to get the economy up and running and a, a route map to get the economy back to health. Miss Sturgeon had to gently point out to Tricky Dicky that she'd already put a commission together as she'd requested four weeks ago and they were already um, looking into how to get the economy started again and get it back to full health. Right, aye, Nicky was on the ball yesterday. We were already... Went we, ah well, who cares about we were here anyway, went we? Of the three English parties and the Scottish Parliament, I don't think anybody pays any attention to we were here any. Um, you know, I don't think we were here any actually knows he's in the Scottish Parliament. I'm not quite sure he knows where he is. I don't think anybody quite knows where he is. I don't think we were even knows how he put his shoes on in the morning. So we were here any went at, and I lost interest altogether at that point. Okay. Yeah. So that was it. Right. Also Thursday, Bank of England held interest rates at 0.01% and announced it was going to pump $100 billion into the economy with another round of quantitative easing. That would take quantitative easing since 2008 up to $740 billion. Quid. Um, the problem with putting a... What the, what the Bank of England's actually going to do with this money is go out and buy bonds, 30-year bonds. And that way, eh, there's money in the economy. There's money going out there. And eh, Richard Leonard's half was a pathetic nor are you right? Anyway, they're going to buy bonds, eh, eh, long term bonds, and uh, hopefully that will help keep interest rates and inflation down. All right. UK government scrap, <laughs> also Thursday, UK government scraps its world beating COVID 19 up. Eh, and they're thinking about moving eh, on to a. Eh, a similar, a, a similar system to Scotland, um, which is a, I actually just got a, an online diary for people to keep a note of their contacts. You know, a, Matt Hancock, a, so Matt Hancock a, shows up a, for a, questions in the Commons and announces that the app doesn't work and they're scrapping it. But I bet you his wife still get paid for creating the app in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's at the dispatch box. Um, Dr. Fopper Whitford took the opportunity um, to have a go at him about the £108 million deal to supply PPE um, to a small a pest control com company. I've, al I've already covered that, right? Um, he, she didn't get an answer for him. She got a lot of waffle for him, right? Thursday as well, student nurses in England get their contracts ripped up and told... You can continue to work in hospitals, but you're not getting paid. Now, these student nurses were dragged out of nursing colleges to go on to the front line to help fight COVID-19, and their contracts were to last to September. Well, the Chancellor, the, the Department for Health in England, scrapped their contracts and tell them, well, you can work for nothing. So, what are they going to do? Um, go back to their colleges, I suppose. You know, right? Scottish firm uh, secures millions in investment to um, install chargers at the side of the uh, on the pavements. Right? Fla uh, flash flat uh, chargers for electric cars. The idea is to revolutionise um, uh, the electric cars. Um, buying here in Scotland, you know, get people to buy electric cars, because people that live in flats can't they charge them up. So this company, uh, it's called Trojan um, Engineers, uh, sorry, Trojan Energy, they've got, they've secured a contract to put into pavements um, electrical charging points, and what the, the, the owners of the electric cars will do is, they will have to buy something called a lance, which will plug into the, the flush flat a charging points and pavements, and then plug their car into the lands. So, ah, uh, you can hear me much better today, can you? That's great. Glad to hear it, Brian. So that's a uh, an innovation that's happening here in Scotland. And what this company's saying is that if it's, if the pilot program works, they can roll it out right across the UK and right across Europe, where anywhere where, where people are living in blocks of flats, they can put these things in flush, flush and flat with the pavement. So it doesn't interfere with, with um, pedestrians, and uh, and then when people pull into park outside the house at night, they can just get the lance out the boot, 
stick it into the plug, uh, stick it into the socket, the flash flush socket in the pavement, and charge their cars. So it could revolutionise electric vehicles here in Scotland. All right. Uh, also Thursday, this is quite funny. Home Office uh, issues a list of countries that have to quarantine for 14 days when the people arrive in the UK. Um, but it appears the Home Office has been asleep because it added countries that don't even exist anymore, like East Germany, South Rhodesia, Yugoslavia, Zaire, and the Czech Republic and the USSR are all on the list. <laughs> Did the Home Office sleep all the way through the 80s and the 90s? <laughs> Caldon Media is coming soon, Rory. Aye. Aye, we'll put a link out about that on Saturday because I'm going to do the talk show with you on Sunday. Um, so that should be hilarious. That's absolutely hilarious. I mean, what was the Home Office doing in the 80s and the 90s? Did they not notice the breakup of the Soviet Union? Did they not notice that all these countries ceased to exist? Oh... Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia and the USSR, East Germany. Oh, bang head off steering wheel. Ah, oh, it's nice to end. It's nice to end Thursday in a bit of comedy. <laughs> right, Friday. I don't have much for Friday, folks, as you know. Um, uh, Friday. I covered Mister Friday on a on the review of the weekend and Monday. Right. So anyway, here's where we go. On, on the radio this morning, it's all about phase two um, on the news, right? Explaining, explaining to people what phase two is, what the differences are and things like that, right? Anyway, a Twitter troll and religious bigot, right-wing religious bigot, Murdo Fraser, was allowed on as the finance spokesman for the, the Conservative Party, uh, was allowed on to have a go at the Scottish government. Oh, Bojo's playing, I because I'm talking about Bojo's playing, I Bojo's playing, get a, uh, get a paint job, a red, white and blue paint job. All right, that's Bojo's playing covered. Anyway, Murdo, that was for Thursday. Murdo's on the radio this morning saying the Scottish government's no going far enough. And then he gets battered in to um, the Scottish government because there's a bill being presented to the Holyrood Parliament today that will be, once it's passed, will we ensure that uh, Scotland stays in line with the EU on environmental standards after Brexit. And uh, what Murdo Fraser's saying is that would make Scotland a rule taker instead of a rule maker. What the hell is this Muppet Murdo own? You couldn't make this stuff up. We're being dictated to for Westminster, but he's saying keeping myself aligned with the EU's high environmental standards would make us a real taker. We're being dictated by his despot party in Westminster, and he's saying the EU's going to be take, dictating to us because we've chosen to stay aligned and we've chosen to maintain high standards and environmental issues in line with the EU. And, of course, we want to stay as closely aligned to the EU as possible um, because... When we get our independence, there'll be a referendum with the people here again, here in Scotland to see if we want to go back into the EU or no. Because that's the rules under EU law. Under EU rules, you can't rejoin the EU unless there's a referendum and the people agree to join the EU. Right? So anyway, that's idiot idea at Murdo. Murdo the, Murdo the religious bigot, right-wing fascist git. Um... Hey, and racist <laughs> says Scotland's going to be a real a real taker instead of a real maker. Scotland, is, oh, never mind. That's as funny as it bloody well gets, idiot. But saying that, Murdo's no blessed with what we call any level of intelligence. In fact, when you look at the Conservative Party in Holyrood, you wonder what gutter they scraped these people out of. You know, Jackson Carlo, alleged art thief. We Annie for Mary Hill. I'm not going to say much more about We Annie. The people of Mary Hill know fine well all about We Annie. And of course, Murdo the Fud. <laughs> yeah, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel with that lot, right? Okay. It's also announced today that the UK government's borrowing for me is the highest ever on record. Between a uh, and the month of May, the UK government borrowed. 55 billion quid 
to cover COVID-19. Huge amount of money. Between April and May um, this year, the, the UK government has borrowed 108 billion quid. They reckon the final cost, the final toll for COVID-19 is going to be 300 billion quid. 30 billion of that will be uh, allocated as Scotland's debt. So far in Scotland, including Furlow and everything else, they've only spent about 5 billion quid. So we're going to pay back 30 billion for 5 billion being spent in our country. Some deal we have got in this union, eh? Right. That's all I've got for the review of the week. I hope we enjoyed it, folks. Huh? So, I'll round this bit of the show up and then we'll have a wee laugh and I'll be looking at what you're saying. Alright, so it's Andy Truck, Davey, and the truck coming to you for Aberdeen when it's misty and uh, quite warm. It's also a wee bit wet at 14 degrees. Right? That'll wait. Whoever's going to clip this and put it out in the radio programmes, clip it and put it out in the radio programmes. We need to make the the, the, the haunt system bite them in the but hooky. Ah, you're right. How can we stop the English influence on a new referendum? Well, actually, that's a good one, Gary, because, you see, I mean... That is outside interference and it's illegal under international law, but because England's done it, eh, Gary, the EU have said, now that the UK have left the EU, the next Scottish referendum, the EU are going to kick in. In other words, the EU are going to make us an offer. They are going to make an offer to the people of Scotland and then Westminster will be trying to put us down and tell us we're too wee, too poor and too stupid. Well, the EU... I've said they're taking the gloves off and they will make us an offer. And that offer will no be to steal our resources. That offer will be to give us an equal partnership in the EU. Something that we don't have in the UK. Actually, Gwen, yeah, Gwen, you're not getting any argument from me, and you and I are both members of CND, so I it is time to stop the renewal of Trident. But that's quite funny, actually, because eh, according to Senator Bolton's group eh, eh, book, which eh, Trump's trying to stop coming out, Trump didn't realise that the UK was a nuclear power. They're about to sell us 205 billion quid's worth of nuclear weapons, and they didn't know the UK was a nuclear power. Ah, oh, Trump's as thick as mints. Laurie, I know about uh, the one to gerrymander the um, uh, the constituencies, the parliamentary constituencies, in order to give uh, the Tories a greater advantage in Scotland and Wales, but it's just not going to happen. The idea was scrapped unless they put it back on the table. HS2, mere debt for Scotland, you're right, Frank. Hopefully we'll not be around to pay for it. Um, let's have a look what else we got. Ah, you're right, April. Tories in Scotland don't need to have any intelligence. They just need to pay up service to their masters in Westminster. Thanks, Stuart. It's nice to say I'm glad you enjoyed the roundup of the week. Um, I quite enjoy writing the roundup of the week. Sometimes it's hard to pick the subjects, actually, because generally on the, the daily show, I'll cover more subjects than what I'll cover in each day in the roundup of the week. Um... Who voted for them? <laughs> they did they voted for them, Frank. They did they voted the Tories. They come in through the back door on the list. According to Britain, that MSM, Scotland is the worst economy in the world. Why did the Scottish government take this? Well, actually, you know, the Scottish people are not even taking it anymore. The Scottish government don't need to do nothing about it, eh, Geraldine, because the Scottish people know it's a lot of crap. In fact, there was an article in The Guardian yesterday, where it was advising, the Guardian was advising Westminster, look, you can stop with this Scotland sc uh, skin crap, the people of Scotland know much better than that. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> the three stooges who sit in the giant janitor's covered and shut up. <laughs> well, the first minister didn't have to tell car crash to shut up yesterday. No. At this point in time, there's very little we can do. I suppose we could take me court and try and stop it. Aye, I've seen that Nori and all. <laughs> hey, car crash, they try to tell the Scottish SMP to stop tweeting. Uh, I've seen Nicola telling him he needs to sort the trolls out in his end bench first. <laughs> yeah, and one of the worst trolls is Murdo Fraser. Uh, Murdo uses Twitter to show the fact that he's a religious bigot and nut job. <laughs> hi, hi, Ian. Hey, hello for Johnson. Oh, hello, Johnson. Right, what are we doing for time? Folks, that's my break over. How much did we get to build the fourth and uh, fourth road bridge for the UK? Nothing, not a penny. Aye, uh, the Queen Street Crossing, you're absolutely right. Thanks for all the vlogs during the week. Good laugh. Good laugh of the day. Aye, Doug, it was a nice one. But as I say, folks, my break's over. I've got 170 miles so to travel, so I'm going to get on my way. Um... I don't broadcast at the weekend normally, although on Sunday I'll be doing, I'll be doing Caldon Radio, uh, Caldon Media, provided everything's working properly. And uh, I will put a link to that up on my uh, my Facebook wall on Saturday and again on Sunday morning. Um, Nori and I were talking about this last night, Nori Hunter and I, and uh, hopefully we'll be going live for a chat around about uh, 3 o'clock on Sunday, all right? So hopefully I'll have a link on my wall for you guys. And uh, have a nice weekend. Remember, the changes that were made to move into phase two are actually just baby steps. So remember your hygiene. Alcohol bowl. And it's no for drinking. It's for keeping my horns sterilised. Right, wash your hands regularly. Remember your social distancing. If you're on public transport, wear a mask. Um, if you're in the shops, wear a fa uh, face covering. Sorry, I'll no use the term mask. All right. Now stay safe. Look after each other. And I'll speak to you all on Sunday if you can, uh, if, if we get this up and running. Caldonmedia.scot. That's where you'll find the link, folks, for a for Sunday's broadcast. As I say, Nori and I are hoping to do a chat on Sunday at 3 o'clock. As I say, stay safe, look after each other, have a great weekend.